The awesome power of U.S. propaganda. Notes from the edge of the narrative matrix. Sometimes I can only stop and stare in awe at the power of the U.S. propaganda machine. Almost the entire global north has been paced into perfect alignment with Cold War agendas geared towards securing U.S. unipolar dominance by an unprecedented propaganda and censorship campaign. There's nothing intrinsic in Russia's invasion of Ukraine which says the nation must be strangled to death by unheard-of levels of economic warfare from Washington loyal governments. A huge international consensus needed to be manufactured for that specific response, and the public needed to go along with it. Just absolutely incredible. By securing control of global narratives via Silicon Valley, Hollywood, and plutocratic news outlets, the U.S. empire has effectively supplanted the U.N. and international law in its ability to get whole groups of nations moving in a certain way with the consent of the governed. The human species is being led around like a dog on a leash by a collective mind control system of unparalleled and unprecedented sophistication that hardly anyone even notices. Imperial propaganda is the single most overlooked and underappreciated aspect of our society. What is the functional difference between state media broadcasters uncritically reporting what the government tells them to report, and Western news media outlets which always uncritically report, quote, scoops that are fed to them by government officials? The fawning hero worship of Zelensky is the most embarrassing and self-debasing thing liberals have done since those pink pussy hats. War is without exception the very worst thing in the world, the most insane, the most traumatizing, the most self-destructive, and the least sustainable. All of the parties involved in this war should have done everything possible to avoid it, and any who claim they did so are lying. The hawks from the first Cold War claimed the collapse of the Soviet Union vindicated their brinkmanship which meant all those nuclear close calls we had during that period were worth it. But it turns out all that happened was a short break before resuming the insane nuclear brinkmanship. We see now that this is set up to go on for a very, very long time. This completely invalidates the belief that these great power competition games of nuclear chicken are sane and worthwhile. Because if you keep rolling the dice on nuclear war day after day and year after year, Eventually, they're going to come up snake eyes. The only sane choice on the table is therefore to move into a cooperative, friendly relationship with these powers. Because facts and evidence show very clearly that trying to dominate and subvert each other will keep going and going until it eventually results in a nuclear conflict. We came close to wiping ourselves out many times during the last Cold War. Very close in some cases. And now we're back at the most dangerous levels of nuclear brinkmanship since the Cuban Missile Crisis. This is unsustainable. It says so much about the madness of our species that half of the controversies surrounding this war exist because we made up a rule that killing people with chemical and biological weapons is illegal, but killing them with bullets and military explosives is perfectly fine. If you have a problem with someone highlighting the culpability of the most powerful government on earth in giving rise to this war, it's because imperial propaganda has turned you into a power-worshipping bootlicker. Uh-huh, I see you've been speaking critically of the most powerful government on earth. That looks very strange and suspicious to me. Perhaps you are a secret agent working for a foreign government. I am very intelligent. Empire loyalists hold that the U.S. Empire may stage coups and threaten foreign nations in ways it would never allow itself to be threatened, and that if those nations retaliate against those actions, the Empire bears no responsibility whatsoever. There's a common, unexamined assumption that the U.S. can't possibly have a villainous role in every major world conflict, that sometimes it's just other governments being evil and that's it. But there really is one uniquely evil asshole on the world stage who fucks with everything. Few people have trouble believing there's a uniquely evil tyrant in the world. They just have a hard time accepting that it's their own government. <laughs>